Hi everyone, so today I want to show you how I made this card and I'm calling this a 3D um, scenic pop-up card. I don't know what its real name is, I'm just calling it a 3D scenic pop-up card. Um, and it folds flat like that obviously and then obviously you've got the nice cross section of your element. Now I originally saw this, it was a, a, bought, a shop bought Christmas card that one of my craft ladies bought and I think it was from Marks and Spencers I think. And it was really nice and it was like um, houses at the back, Christmas tree in the middle and like benches at the front. And I really liked it but I sort of didn't quite know what how to do it um, and I hadn't seen anything online like it. Then in Aldi last year I saw these which is exactly the same card. They've had a bit of a problem with their struts because they're clearly not the right size but anyway. Uh, <laughs> but I like the colours and I love the design. So I bought a pack of cards so I could deconstruct it and see how to make it. So that's what we're doing today. So this was the one that I did. Um, it was a bit of a faff, I have to say I did make quite a few mistakes, but we got there in the end. So that's that one. And then I've just done it today in class and I've done it slightly differently. So this is the one I did in class today. So again, you've got the, um, so it folds flat like that and it goes in a six by six envelope. Okay, and so I'm going to do one, um, obviously a non-Christmassy one, because obviously this is now January. Um, but I just wanted to say that these are 6x6. Six six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the measurements for the 6x6, six six, okay? My measurements are different. So what I'm actually doing, the card, the card pieces that I've got are not the right sizes, okay? Just to let you know. But my card is going to end up being five and a half by seven inches, which is a really awkward size. Um, and you could, it's really difficult to find envelopes for it, okay? So go by what I say, not by what you see on my scoreboard, okay? Just That's just a little note for you. So this is a six by six, this one. This is six inches by six inches. So that's what your finished card will look like, okay? Um, the reason I've gone a bit larger, not to make life difficult for myself, but just because I was having trouble trying to find a topper that would fit. So basically, you will need for this card, you will need a piece of card. So you see this back piece here. You need a back piece of card, a base piece as I would call it, a base piece of card that is six inches by six inches. Now on that six by six, and note again, this isn't six by six, but the one you have will be. On your six by six, you're going to score it in half at three inches, okay? So you're scoring it in half at three inches, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to fold it in half. So you've got a six by six piece of card, and you're folding it in half so that this is now three inches by six inches, okay? So that's what that will be. So you can put that to one side. Now you also need, we're going to get all the scoring out of the way first. You also need another piece, which will be a long strip like this, and this piece is what is going to go across the front here, okay? So this piece here measures seven inches by one and a half, and all you're going to do is you're going to put it on your scoreboard, and you're going to score it half an inch, turn it round, half an inch the other side, and then you're going to score it at three and a half inches in the middle. Okay, three and a half in the middle. So then what happens is when you fold that like that, it folds in half and then these little half tabs are also going to fold in. So everything's mounting folds. So you end up with a piece that looks like that. Okay, so this is seven inches by one and a half inches. You score half an inch either side and then you score halfway at three and a half inches. Okay, so that's that piece. So that can go to one side. Next, you need two little struts. Now, these struts will measure one inch tall. You can change the height if you want to, but don't go above one and a half because that's the height of this one. One inch tall by four inches wide. Okay, so these are these pieces here. So these two struts here, that, that's what we're doing now. So they are four inches long by one inch tall. And again, with this, you just want to score them at half an inch on either end. And that's it. So half an inch, either end, like that. And again, half an inch at either end. And that is all you need to do with those. Okay? So that is all your scoring done for now. 
So what you need to do next is you need to work out what you're going to put on the back of your card. Now for the first one I did, I heat embossed it so that you can see that heat embossed Merry Christmas. So if you want to do that, then now is the time to do it. Go ahead and heat emboss on the back of your card. If you're going to do like I did for this card, so this one I had matte and layer panels, okay? I'm going to do that for this card that I'm doing now. So I'm going to give you the measurements for that. So what you want is you want a matte layer, which is your red layer on this card, for example, and that is going to be five and three quarters by two and three quarters. Okay, so you need two of those, one for this side, one for that side. Your pattern pieces, again, you need two panels, and that is going to be five and a half by two and a half. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead now and stick those down. So I've got these. Oh, that way around. Like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to stick them down either side. Okay. Right, so there you go, I've stuck my panels down, so that's your card base finish. So you can put that to one side. Now what you want to do now is take your two struts that are the same, that are four inches by one inches, um, and you're just going to um, just fold the two tabs, just give them a fold backwards and forwards, because in a minute we'll sort out which way they need to go. Now the other thing you need to do is work out what you're going to put in the middle as your centrepiece of your card. So obviously for this, I've used the ball ball. I've used the ball ball die. Now, one thing to note, you need to make sure that whatever you put in the middle is no bigger than two and a half inches, okay? The reason I say this is because when you're, when it's open like that, that ball ball width, if that's, because this, this um, uh, what's the word, diameter? No, measurement across there is three inches. So you want to give a little bit of leeway. Now, I was pushing it a little bit with this Christmas one because if you can see, if I turn it upside down, you can see, maybe, hopefully, this middle topper, there's literally like a quarter of an inch between the edge of that topper and the inside of the card. Like there's literally a fraction. So you really don't want to go too much. Okay, I was pushing it because I was matte and layering this. Um, so today what I'm going to do is I've got these toppers and like I said because I couldn't find any toppers that were small enough because I wanted to do an easy an easier way um, of doing this this middle part so I just thought if I can find four toppers that are all the same which I could um, then I would rather use that but what I would say is you're better off now then this is difficult trying to explain this okay the first one I made I did a die cut, okay, so this was my die cut. Very nice intricate die cut, and I mounted it onto blue card and stuck. So I made four die cuts, stuck, I'll take this apart a second, stuck one on here and one on the back. One on here and one on the back, and then mounted them onto their little struts, okay? Now, if I hadn't have put this blue backing card on, then this die cut would not be standing up. It would be a shambles, okay? So you have to have something to strengthen your middle die cut top or whatever it is you're putting in the middle, okay? So that's what I did for this one. Now, if you don't want to do a, a delicate die cut like that and you're going to do more of a solid die cut, which is what I did for this one, I cut it out of pattern paper. Again, here, this pattern paper is not going to be strong enough to hold itself up because it's only 200 GSM. So two of them stuck together, it's not that thick. Yeah, so that's why I put, if you can see, I put my hand behind it, that's why I put it onto the blue card and then I cut round it, okay? Because I wanted it stronger, because you really do need it to be really strong when the two pieces slot together. Okay, so that's another option. You die cut a solid shape out of pattern paper, mount it onto a piece of card, and then cut around the outside, either fussy cut or if you've got a bigger die that works, you could use that. Um, and basically cut another shape out that's the same size and shape, well, same shape, but just slightly bigger than the, than the front one. Okay, and you do, so you'd need four, four pattern baubles and you'd need two of your 
um, base card. We'll call it base card baubles. Okay. So for this one, again, taking it a different step again, I had a topper, which was this rectangular one, and I had four toppers. So you always need four. Whatever the main, main image is, you need four of them. So I had four toppers, and then I cut out four lots of red mat, and this is very thin pearlized paper. Um, and then I mounted it onto one piece of very, per, very thin pearlized paper, and I had two panels. Because you have to remember, these gonna, they're going to fit like that. So this has to be one panel, that has to be the other. Okay, so today I'm, I'm really scaling it right back and I'm making it as basic as I possibly can. So these are the other options you can build up to. Okay, so I've got four toppers that are identical. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my topper and as I said, this can't be any wider than two and a half inches for the dimensions I've given you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this topper, I'm going to take my strut and I'm going to stick just the bottom of my topper onto there. Before I do that, I am going to ink my edges because I do like the matte and layered look. So I'm just going to use a bit of distress ink and I'm just going to go around the edge of my topper before I do that. Okay, so there are my um, inked toppers. So I'm now going to go ahead, I'm going to stick one, let's put one strip to one side, I'm going to stick one on the front there like that. So I'm just going to flip this over and you need to make sure that the edge of your topper does not go over the width of where your, so this is where my folding line is. You need to make sure that it doesn't go over that edge because if it goes over that edge it's not going to fit. Okay, so just make sure that it doesn't do that. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to lay this down for a second and I'm just going to get a pencil and I'm going to draw just around the bottom edge of my topper and then I know where I need to stick it. Okay, so I'm going to stick that down now and you want to use either a strong wet glue or some red tape to stick your topper onto your strut with. Something nice and strong. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that down. Like that. And just do this quickly and just do a quick test. That doesn't, and that doesn't, that's good. Right, so when you've done the front one, you step the front one down, turn it over, and you're going to glue the whole of the back of there. In fact, you could do it on your on your other topper, and that's going to go completely over the top there. But you need to make sure that you put glue or tape all over it, not just around the outside, it needs to go all over. And then we stick that down. Okay, so that's one done. We're going to do exactly the same on the other piece. In fact, what you need to do now, we are going to do the same on the other piece, but what you need to do is this needs to be identical to that. So the placement of your circle needs to be identical. So what I tend to do is I get the other strip and I place it over the top like this, making sure it lines up exactly. And then I take my, I'll take a bit of glue. Now you could draw on it if you want to, I'm going to guess it, which is a bit tricky, but and we're going to just guess roughly where on here that's going to stick at the bottom, like that. And then we're going to take this and we're going to make sure it lines up exactly with the one we've just done. Like that. And then when we're happy where it is, just clear away the excess glue. You can move that one out of the way, turn that over, and that's going to go on the back. If you've got a pattern like I have, a flower, you really need to try and get that flower as close to what it looks like on the other side as possible. Because in a minute, the um, half of one side is going to be trying to match up with half of another side, of another topper. If you don't, you'll see it in a minute. Or we cut it in half. So here's our 
second one. So we're going to try and get that as matched up as we possibly can. That's why I like wet glue because it gives you a bit of time to get it into position. Right, so once you've got both of them stuck down ready to go, what you're going to do now is you're going to measure across from one side to the other. Now yours are obviously four inches, your, your struts, so you're going to measure across and you're going to make a mark at two inches, okay? So I'm going to measure mine, mine will be slightly different because I've got slightly different measurements. So you measure across and you mark halfway. So at the bottom here, so I'm going to measure and I'm going to mark at halfway, which is there. Okay. And hopefully, mine hasn't quite turned out right, but hopefully where you've measured at half should be where your halfway is of your topper, in theory. Mine's ended up not being quite so good. But anyway, you're then going to turn it round and you're going to measure the height of your topper and the strut together. Now my head's going to have to get in the way for this because I can't see otherwise. You need to make sure it's nice and straight. In fact, if you've got a grid, then now is the time to use it. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to put this on a grid in a minute. So what you want to do is you want to um, measure down and say, for example, the height of your topper is six inches. No, it won't be that. Five inches. Say it's five inches tall. Then you want to measure down from the top two and a half inches. Doosh. So that's the centre of your topper. And then you're going to draw a line from your two and a half inches all the way down. OK, I'm going to do mine off camera. Right, so as you can hopefully see, that's my halfway mark. And I've just measured straightly up, making sure this is a 90 degree angle. Straight up and I've gone up halfway. So say for example, this was four inches, for example, then you would go from the bottom and you would come up two inches because that's halfway. And you're already halfway this way, so this is where you go up to. Okay, and you take your other one and you do the same thing, but this time you come from the top and you come down two inches if you've got a four inch piece, for example, okay? Uh, and again, it has to be halfway here. Okay, I've just realized that if I use my trimmer, that works well, because what I can do is where I've marked my halfway mark, if I use this bit of the ruler, I can nudge up this edge and this edge up to that edge there. And then what I can do is line up my little halfway mark, and then my ruler then tells me where I'm going and how much I, can, I, need, to cut, I need to draw down. Okay, so that's what you're doing on those. So now that you've done those, what you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut up that line. So we're going to start with the one that's bottom to the middle. Up that line and you're going to go just to the side of the pencil line. Okay, so you're not cutting on the pencil line as such. You're just literally cutting. I don't know if you can, hoping you can see that. You can see my pencil line and then you can see where I've cut. I'm literally... I'm basically cutting the pencil line out. That's what I'm doing. You're literally going to cut about a millimetre. So I'm going to cut uh, the other side of the pencil line now so that you've got a little slot that's about a millimetre wide. Okay? It's literally only a fraction. You don't need very much. Depends on how thick your card is, obviously, but it doesn't need very much. Okay, so I don't know if you can see. Can you see that? Can you see how that's a little slot I've cut out? It's not just a slit, it's an actual slot. <laughs> there is a difference. Now to test that you've cut out enough with the other one, just put it over the top and just see. And if that slides on and off like that, quite nice and easily, then that's fine. If it's a bit baggy, you've cut too much. <laughs> but um, hopefully it's you best to err on the cautious side because you can always shave a little bit more off. Then you want to take your other one and you're going to start from the top and you're going to cut down. So you're going to cut you down your pencil line and you're going to do exactly the same as what you've already done. So you're going to cut down here like this, down till you get to halfway, and then you're going to cut on the other side of the pencil line and basically just trim that pencil line out so you won't see it and also it gives you a slot that you can slot the other half in. So you end up with that. So then you're going to put the two together, so the top goes in the top and the bottom goes in the bottom, and see. Now if they don't quite, so this you can see that. Can you see how at the top there it's not, I haven't quite gone down enough. 
because my if I lie this flat can you see how the top doesn't marry up with the top so I just need to cut down a little bit further on one of them so I'm just going to have a look I'm going to cut down on this one I'm just going to cut down a tiny bit further just like I don't know a fraction like that just poke out that little bit the little nodgy bit I've just cut out and just trim it off if I can just use my pokey tool to get it to go down there we go and then just take that little bit off like that and then the two hopefully should slot nicely there we go together okay So there you go from the top and then that's it flat so now what you want to do is you want to take your your piece now it will want to move around like this and be all over the place okay so what you want to do is just make it sit up straight like that so it's nice and straight this the struts all line up with each other yeah and your your picture should be a complete picture so it should be all nicely complete and with it like that you're going to put tape here and tape here and you want red tape for this you do not want to use normal tape so you're going to take your red tape and you're just going to put it on the top of those tabs like that And like that okay so now what you're going to do is you're going to peel off peel off the backing of those two bring your card back in take your your middle bit make sure they're straight it's very important that they're straight and you're going to hold it straight and you're going to flip it over like that so the sticky bit is now facing downwards you're going to line up this halfway mark with the halfway mark on your card and you need to make sure because this is an inch okay and your front piece that you'll be put on later on is an inch and a half so like see how mine if i if i married this up with the with the very bottom of my card then this is going to cover up part of my my topper so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to raise this up ever so slightly okay so i know i've got half an inch so if I just lay this on here like that, I know that that's the highest I can go. So I'm just going to put that on like that. And I'm just going to raise it up and I'm just going to make sure that it's nice and straight. And that my halfway line. There we go. So I know my halfway line goes up the top and it comes all the way down and that is stuck on now. Okay, so I've stuck that on. So now I'm going to put some tape on these bits here. Okay, and we're just going to put that out of, the, out of the way for a second and we're going to bring this bit in. So this bit here, again, you've got a mountain fold, mountain fold, mountain fold. So on the front of these, on the top of these, you're going to put tape. Okay, so there's my strip, my big long strip, and it's got um, tape on either side. So now I'm going to take off the tape on one side. And I'm going to tape off the tape here. And I'm also going to do this one as well. Oh, sorry, let me bring it down. So I've taken off the backing on this tab and on that tab. Okay. Now, what you want to do is you're going to take your strip. You're going to fold this sticky side under like that. Okay. And then you're going to marry this up. So that centre fold there, you want to marry up with the centre fold here. So I've got that straight, so now I'm just going to stick this side down. It's a little bit raised up, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to stick that down there. This bit's stuck, that tab's stuck. So all that is left to do now is to peel your backing off here, fold that tab in, and stick it down. Okay, so now when you put your card up, it should then pop up 
and make your 3D scenic pop-up card. Okay, and then all you need to do is just decorate your front. So obviously you can do what you want with your front. On this one, I because I had the dark card, I literally just put some gold die cuts on and just stuck those down. Um, with this one, I put some paper on the front and then a couple of snowflakes. Um, and obviously on the pre-printed shop bought card, they've actually got some little, which is quite cute, and actually had it, you know, as a little foxes and a deer and it's all pre-printed. So you can maybe stamp it or heat emboss. Um, if you've got edgeable dies, that might work. Instead of cutting um, a piece that's one and a half high by seven, you could go for seven and then just do your edgeable die. That would work nicely. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's lots of different things you can do with it, but that's basically how you do it. So I'm going to finish this off off camera and you'll see it in a bit. And then, as I said, it folds flat into an envelope like that and yours because of the measurements I've given you will fit into a six by well an envelope for a six by six card so your envelope will need to be probably six and a quarter by six and a quarter but if you buy envelopes that are made for six by six inch cards then they should fit just watch it though just I would just double check the measurements because I have recently had some cards and envelopes that say they're six and six, six by six cards and envelopes and actually the cards are five and three quarter by five and three quarter and the envelopes are six by six okay so just double make sure that you know your envelopes are slightly bigger than six inches by six inches otherwise this won't fit in but anyway i think it's quite a nice card i like the fact it folds very flat so that's you're not gonna have any problem posting that at all um and i've used quite thick card on this and even with quite thick card it's not, you know, it's not that wadgy. I haven't put gems on deliberately. I've put foam pads, but only the thin ones for the greeting. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you wanted to as well, if these struts offend you inside, because you can sort of see them, you could always cover them up with whatever paper you're using if you want to. Um, it's really up to you. I just think probably by the time I've done something on the front here, you know, you're not really going to notice it, but it's up to you. Obviously with the blue one, it was less noticeable because I just literally had a blue background, blue struts, blue front, everything was the same colour. So it all blends. So yeah, but hopefully you have a go. Um, it's not too bad. It, it, I mean, it is. When I first tried to work this out, it was an absolute nightmare trying to work it out. And we had great fun in our craft class doing it. But um, yeah, it's not too bad. It's, it's a bit of work. I think once you've done one and got it in your head how to do it, it's, uh, it's easier. Definitely do it this way with the toppers is easier than doing it like I did for this one because this was very interesting. <laughs> it's all I'm gonna say. It's very interesting. I mean, it's doable, but it, it is a bit more. It's a bit more challenging, okay, and a bit more work as well. But yeah, so hopefully you like that. Um, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.